just last month, you, you had said right here on CNBC that you didn't think it was necessary to start tapering just yet, that that, that, that was something you'd be waiting to take some cues from, from Fed Chairman Jay Powell. W what do you think now? It's been about, I don't know, about a month and a half since then. Well, the, uh, <clears throat> the chair officially opened the discussion uh, at this past meeting, and now we'll have a chance to have more uh, in-depth discussions uh, coming ahead here. Uh, I don't know quite how the chair wants to organize that, but I do know from past discussions on the committee that it's quite a complicated thing. There are lots of moving pieces in a taper, uh, the pace, uh, You've got MBS versus Treasuries. Uh, when do you start? Uh, how state contingent is the taper? I think these are all key factors here, and I'd like to emphasize the state contingency uh, aspect. I think uh, in the 2013-2014 taper, we went on automatic uh, pilot and didn't do much. We we said that there would, you know, we would react to incoming data. You know, I think, to be fair, I think we didn't really have to in 2014. But this time around, I mean, look at this data. Look at how uh, outsized all these numbers are and, and how volatile everything has been. I, I think we're going to have to be more state contingent than we have been in the past. Okay, that, that's interesting. In, in terms of mortgage-backed securities or the Treasury market, I mean, at this point, the Fed is about half the Treasury market. Would you <clears> anticipate <throat> you move out of Treasuries first or you move out of mortgage-backed securities? You know, there's a lot of discussion about the mortgage-backed securities. I don't know where that's going to go. Um, I'm I'm leaning a little bit toward the idea that uh, maybe we don't need to be in mortgage-backed securities with a booming housing market and even even a threatening housing bubble here, right. uh, according to some people. So we don't want to get back in the in the housing bubble game. That caused us a lot of distress uh, in. The 2000s. So um, uh, we'll see where this where this comes out. Some people argue that there's not much difference between MBS and Treasuries anyway, so there's no no reason to go one way or the other. But I would be a little bit concerned about feeding into the housing uh, froth that seems to be uh, developing. And, and when you talk about this idea that it's going to have to be data dependent, uh, you'll kind of do this and see what happens. Is that an indication that maybe you won't say, OK, we're going to cut by X amount this month and we'll continue to do that every month? It'll just be you guys see meeting to meeting how much you think needs to, to have happen. And that's what telegraph is telegraphed to the market after the fact. Well, that'll have to be uh, that'll have to be part of the debate. But I've long been an advocate of being uh, more nimble on these things and being more state contingent. Uh, like I say, in 2014, we didn't really have to exercise that option. But this is a situation where we might have to exercise the option. I mean, you don't really know where inflation's uh, going to go here, or even the economy as a whole. And uh, you've got a lot of reopening to come here. Uh, not just in the U.S., but across the world uh, during 20, the second half of 2021. And I think during all of 2022, you've got the rest of the world uh, reopening and possibly booming the same way the U.S. is today. Uh, so we'll see if all that develops. But, but I think we have to be ready to make adjustments as necessary as we, as we go along this path. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.